Hello, in this lecture, we're going to continue on the production possibility model trade and globalization in chapter two. And remember that our goals are to demonstrate trade offs with the production possibility curve, relate the concepts of comparative advantage and efficiency to the production possibility curve, state how through competitive advantage and trade countries can consume beyond their individual production possibilities, and explain how globalization is guided by the law uh, of one price. All right, so you remember last time that we had a production possibility curve that we saw a table form and we put in a production possibility curve form. And that uh, curve was actually a straight line, not, not really a curve. <laughs> so we had a straight line and that indicated how much we could study uh, between two different uh, fields and see what the outcome would be. And now we're going to gonna take a look at a similar idea here, but we're going to change things up a bit. So this is kind of a traditional production possibility frontier. We're going to have an increasing opportunity cost of the trade-offs. So the principle of increasing marginal opportunity cost tells us that the opportunity costs increase the more you concentrate on one activity. So here's a, a classic production possibility type curve where we, we're going to talk about uh, guns and butter. Uh, re, guns and butter kind of refer to if we think about the economy as a whole and we think about just two items of the economy and we break those two things out and we can think of them as groups in general butter being things like consumption for if we um for you know consumer consumption and guns being things like defense so if we think about those two types of things and we're uh, going to see how much we should concentrate and produce in one or two of these areas within within the economy so we're thinking like these are two separate uh, just two things that we could produce one uh, butter two guns and the same way we thought about the studying of history or economics before where where should we produce or how much can we produce so for example if we take a look at this point a here so now we're up here and we're producing a lot more in terms of butter than we are in terms of guns and what that means is because of the slope line what we're saying is if we produce another unit of, of butter uh, because we're up here at this level in the curve it's actually costing us more guns to produce uh, another unit it's costing us more and more as we're up here in this curve to produce another unit of butter if we if we look down here on uh, point b the slope is steep at point b this means that uh, is a high opportunity cost to produce more guns same thing over here we're over here producing mainly guns and what that is saying is that if we produce another unit of guns it's costing us more and, and notice what the cost is. Again, we're not talking about dollars in terms of the cost. There's two things that we can uh, produce and, the, and then consume. One butter, the, the consumption, and the other guns, kind of like defense. And so when we, when, we, when we say we're producing down here at B, if we produce more, another unit of guns, and we're all the way down here, that means it's costing us more. It's costing us more in what we're giving up in terms of, of the butter that we're giving up because of the sloped line. So we can we could see this graphically if we were to graph out points the way we did prior as well and this would be what the curve would be looking like so the question would be well why is that why is it not a straight line as we looked at before and the reason we we must give up uh, the competitive advantage the reason we must give up more and more butter as we produce more guns is that some resources are relatively better suited to producing guns while other are relatively better suited for producing butter so when we think about the res if we have these two resources that we are, we have these two products, butter and gun, that we're allocating all of our resources to, it could very well be that many of our resources are, are better suited for producing butter and many of our resources are better suited for producing guns. I mean, so if we think about that just in terms of uh, people's labor, if we think about the labor as being the resource that we are allocating, then uh, it would make sense that some people are better at producing the butter side of things, and some people may be better skilled and equipped to produce the guns side of things. So if we produce all butter, then the people who are better suited to produce guns can cannot produce as much butter as they could guns, right? We're, we're applying their skills to producing butter when they might be better suited to uh, producing guns, and, and that's why we have the sloped or curved line. So a resource has a competitive advantage if it is better suited to production of one good uh, than to the production of another good. So notice we, we looked at the curve and it was somewhat symmetrical there. And that's not always going to be the case either. I mean, if the two things were asymmetrical, for example, uh, if, if we had 
uh, an area we had just happened to be better suited to to making the butter than the guns and so if we had like just really good farmland or something like that then uh we could have a competitive advantage of, of producing the butter over the guns in that case so if we look at our curve then uh efficiency we're going to th th think about what is efficient in terms of our production possibility frontier and remember that anywhere on this curve is what we could do we, we can do anything within this curve we can have any combination on this curve that's our production possibility frontier and anywhere on the curve is efficient so if i if we put our uh produce at either a or c both points are efficient now when we think about efficiency all that all that is saying is that we're taking all the resources we can and we're fully utilizing them to produce whatever point we decide to produce uh, on the other hand, so it doesn't mean it's optimal in terms of uh, what what would be best to produce, because now that means that any point on the line is efficient. That's not telling us what point on the line we should produce. We probably want to be on the line because that's the max that we could be producing, but we don't know exactly what combination would be best on the line. We'll have to discuss that more. We do know that we cannot produce at this point in time anything outside the line. We can't produce at point D because that's impossible. We don't, we don't have, there's no combination of uh, resources being allocated to be at point D. Now, if we came up with a better technology, if we thought more and we came up with a great idea, yeah, then the whole production possibility may shift out if that's the case. And of course, we're always going to be looking, we want the production possibility curve to shift out. But given the current resources D, uh, in this model, D is outside of what can be done. And B over here, uh, the point in the production possibility curve it means that we're not we're not applying our resources efficiently so b is what we don't want to happen meaning uh, we have resources that we could be applying to guns and butter and we're wasting some of them somehow and therefore we're producing somewhere inside the production possibility frontier so in terms of an economy as a whole if we're looking at the economy as a whole we don't want to be inside the production possibility frontier we want to be as close to on it as as possible because that means that we are efficient. So we want to be somewhere on the production possibility frontier generally when we're thinking about the economy as a whole, because that means we could consume as much butter and guns as possible because we're producing as much guns and butter as possible. But we want to know where on the line too we should be producing for, for our best benefit. So uh, efficiency and technology change. So neutral technology increase or increase in resources. So note that we talked about, well, the production possibility could shift if we have these two processes, if we have guns and butter, and uh, let's say that uh, something happened like there was an increase in the population or something. Now we have more human capital. And if that human capital was equally good as, as our ratio was before at producing guns and butter, then that would shift out the production possibility frontier because now we could produce more stuff. And if that was the case, then the production possibility because of the increase in capital would shift out so now we could be at any point uh, and our new possibility is out here we can produce more guns and butter evenly distributed if however the technology increased is biased for example if if we became uh, aware of a better way to produce corn or something and we can produce uh, you know massively more amount of corn on uh, the same amount of property then the production possibility frontier will shift out However, it'll shift out something like this, right? We would see more of, a, of an uneven shift where uh, we could produce more of the corn and uh, we have an uneven push out of the production possibility frontier.